Prime Local News brought to you by Retrovision with eight big electrical stores on the Gold Coast. Buy electrical items anywhere else and you'll pay too much. Prime Local News, live from our Southport studios. Petty cabs fighting to stay on surface paradise streets. I will be on the dock. A Japanese tourist rescued from the surf. The Chinese giant killer out of the tennis final. Good evening, I'm Kathy Burke. Thanks for joining us. The man who led an inquiry into shady inbound tourism practices has told a Queensland senator to get off his soapbox and do something about it. Bob Brett says the state has done all it can, now it's up to the federal government. On any given day in surface paradise, you'll see busloads of tourists being herded where their tour operators want them to go. There's good money in it for them, with commissions as high as 50% for guides who favour particular shops. Some of the shops have paid half a million dollars in the kickbacks. The cash element of the commission payment is $20 million on the Gold Coast. The problem's so bad, in some cases, those who aren't on tour can't even shop in certain stores. They don't like you going in there at all. They, are, they ask you to leave, they only want to serve Japanese or tourists. Angry after the Inbound Tourism Association admitted its common practice, Senator Bill O'Cheese issued this challenge. Either cease the practice of kickbacks or have the integrity and the courage to tell their tourists how much they are getting in secret commissions. The MPs accused tour operators of ripping off their own clients as well as Australian retailers. You cannot afford to have a 20% secret commission unless you jack up the prices and rip off the tourists who come to your shop. It's nothing new to the man who headed a state task force into the problem. People can do what they like when there is no regulation. Now, if Senator O'Chee wants people to disclose it, and enact some legislation that forces them to do that, or put some legislation in place that doesn't allow them to ask for commissions in the first place. With the reputation of Australia's fastest growing industry being put at risk, the Tourism Bureau boss says it's now a federal matter. Why the hell are they putting up with it? with the most dynamic industry the country has. Diane By, Prime Gold Coast News. Pedicab operators in Surfers Paradise are the latest to bear the brunt of the city's new anti-touting laws. They say a council crackdown will put passengers at risk and them out of business. Pedicabs have become a regular sight on Surfers Paradise streets, but operators say their livelihoods and their lives are now in jeopardy. Someone could get killed just trying to earn a living. Council has ordered the cabs off the footpaths where drivers regularly collect fares, likening them to touts. Allowing the pedicabs to remain there whilst we police the anti-touting laws uh, appears to be favouritism. The penalty for not complying, fines of up to $5,000. If uh, footpaths are congested, then there could be some fines next week. Well, that means a business that I've just opened and started over three months has now completed, folded, I will be on the dole. Council has suggested loading zones be used to pick up passengers, but pedicab drivers say that's impossible and they'll be forced into the path of traffic. Well, they're putting people's lives at risk. You have to park on the shoulder of the road. Both the operators and local business want council to allocate special spaces for the cabs. Where there are a series of pedicab ranks, there might be a couple on this corner and a couple at other places, and throughout the Par Central Surface Paradise area, there'll be plenty of places for them to park where they can pick up their customers and where it's safe. New council bylaws, including options for licensing and the possibility of designated ranks, are expected within the next three months. Council has invited the pedicab operators to a formal meeting to try to find a solution. Diane Riley, Prime Gold Coast News. A Japanese tourist was among six people rescued by lifeguards on Gold Coast beaches today. The 18-year-old got into trouble swimming between the flags at Surfers Paradise. Lifeguards spotted the man from the Elkhorn Avenue tower and brought him into shore. He was conscious throughout the ordeal but had swallowed water and was having difficulty breathing. Ambulance officers gave him oxygen before taking him to Gold Coast Hospital for observation. He's in a stable condition. The stench plaguing Helens Vale and Monterey Key residents could soon be over. Council's considering dredging as a long-term solution as residents press ahead with court action against a developer and council. This morning, three-year-old James Wiskins played happily outside his Monterey Keys home. When the smell comes, it's a different story. His mother Bronwyn won't let her son outside and is forced to shut up the house. 
Hundreds of residents in the area protested last October, blaming the stench on sewage from Council's Coomba Bar treatment plant. There's nausea, there's bad headaches, there's, you know, there, there are a lot of health problems in this particular pocket. Council insisted the smell was rotting mangroves. Residents are yet to be convinced and blame Council and the Monterey Keys developer anyway. The mangroves were going to be a problem and there was enough research when this development was initiated to know that it would be a problem. Well then there should not have been the approval, which is why you know the action will be a joint action against both the developer and Council. In the meantime, Council is spending $300,000 to minimise odours from the treatment plant, the work due to finish next month. A draft environmental consultant's report recommends dredging the entrance to Coomba Bar Lake as a permanent solution. There's a silting up of the neck of Coomba Bar Lake and uh, there'll, be, there'll be some uh, work that will have to be done uh, before June to enable uh, a free flow of, of movement, tidal uh, water in and out of Coomba Bar Lake. Such a project would require Environment Department approval and needs to be done by mid-year before the smell recurs. A notorious Southport intersection claimed more casualties this morning. A sedan and a food delivery van collided at traffic lights on the corner of Ferry Road and Mini Street. The female drivers of both vehicles were taken by ambulance to Gold Coast Hospital. A young male passenger in the car was also taken in for observation. Traffic was diverted around the scene. The intersections become a regular spot for accidents with cars turning across the traffic into the commercial area. A final verdict from a departing member of the bench, that story in the news ahead, and why the cake making business is not always a piece of cake. News. Two shop employees depositing the day's takings were robbed at Pacific Fair last night. A man wearing dark clothing and a black balaclava demanded money as the women loaded two wallets into the National Australia Bank night safe just after 9.30. And Southport's retiring senior magistrate admits the Gold Coast is losing the war against crime. Leaving with a sense of frustration as well as accomplishment, Marshall Davies believes the legal system desperately needs an overhaul. Marshall Davies has viewed the world from the bench for 22 years, five of them as Southport Court's senior magistrate. Tens of thousands of criminals have appeared before his worship, rising crime making the caseload almost unmanageable. We're not winning a war because we have so little contact with the people. All we're doing is handing them penalties and that's as much as we can do. Mr Davies believes criminals have changed. Many feel no remorse. A lack of consideration for other people. Uh, you don't have any respect for their property or for their person. People are more volatile. They'll assault people uh, much more readily than years ago. Hanging up his robes, the 58-year-old is frustrated at the number of people who fall through the cracks of justice. His final verdict is on the system he tried to make work. So I think there's a need for an overhaul in our sentencing system. There's need for um, a greater understanding of why people come before the court. With a genuine belief some people can be helped by the courts, Mr Davies plans to do community work within the justice system. Julie Corner, Prime Gold Coast News. A proposal by movie makers to set up an horizon tank on the spit is shaping as this year's major issue for Gold Coast business. The combined Chamber of Commerce is the latest to support the plan as conservationists continue to consider their legal options. Few issues have the power to divide a community more than development versus the environment and business is not about to argue against keeping the city green. And this city is a tourist based town and uh, we've got to offer facilities to our tourists and one of the things that tourists want to see is a pristine environment. But the planned horizon tank on the spit should be the exception, says the combined chamber of commerce. Extensive studies have been undertaken and as a result of those studies, a site on the spit has been identified. Almost 300 businesses have lobbied the chamber to support the movie-making tank. 80 of them at Narang rely solely on a film industry already battling competition from Sydney and Melbourne. And if we want to retain the jobs, 
uh, and we want to retain an industry on the Gold Coast, we've got to have a strategic advantage. Despite receiving 700 objections, councillors support the project pending an environment impact study. The Greens want a say on its terms of reference. A meeting with their legal eagles yesterday set an appeal process in place with initial plans to lobby the local government minister on the grounds that council didn't comply with the Act when it changed laws protecting the spit but the business community is satisfied that it will be a controlled one-off development. If the proposal were to close up for any reason, then the spit would be returned to its existing state. With the government-sponsored Pacific Film and Television Corporation backing the project, intervention by the state to stop it is unlikely. Diane Bai, Prime Gold Coast News. Gold Coast Police will be hitting the streets in some novel patrol cars over the next few months. Three Daihatsu vans were donated today by corporate sponsor Sunshine Ford. Sunshine has been lending cars to the police during busy periods for five years. We have been getting more and more first year constables on the Gold Coast and I've recently learned that some of them have had to walk the beat extensively because of the lack of motor vehicles. The mini marked cars come complete with lights and sirens. While they're perfect for zipping through surface paradise, the new vehicles won't be taking part in any major operations or high-speed chases. They will be returned to the car yard in three months and sold on as used vehicles. Well, two of the world's best pastry chefs have turned baking cakes into an art form and their cake creations give new meaning to the saying, too good to eat. There are cakes for every occasion and cakes beyond imagination. After long international careers, pastry chef Sadar Yena and Martin Reich have set up shop in Southport and this is no ordinary bakery. Uh, we can do people's themselves, their faces on the cake. We can put uh, the sculptures on the cake or we can put the sceneries that where they lived before. We can create the scenery on the cake like people doing something on the cake. Yenmar Pastry Art specialise in wedding and special occasion cakes and chocolate sculptures. Each creation is custom made, but some are never eaten. Well, some of them, they called them back and said, oh, we don't cut the cakes, uh, we'll keep it because the showpiece was so nice. The two chefs met at Conrad Jupiter's five years ago, where they created some of the hotel's finest works of edible art. Yenna has won a string of international awards and has even made cakes for the Sultan of Brunei. Twice had been the uh, most outstanding pastry chef, once in Singapore and once in uh, Switzerland. This Chinese wedding cake is the most outstanding example of their talents, which they're now sharing with local TAFE students. There's virtually nothing Yenna and Martin can't use to make one of their amazing creations. All bran was used to make the leaves on the trees, corn flakes became grass. A cake like this takes a week to make and sells for close to $1,000. You can buy your own piece of cake art for as little as $50. And they're amazing. Well, it's been a big day in sport, David. Yes, thanks, Cathy. Some big prices at the yearling sales, that's coming up. And finals berths decided at the women's hardcourt tennis. Welcome back. Japanese player Ai Sugiyami is through to her second Australian hardcourt tennis final at Hope Island. The number four seed disposed of Chinese giant killer Shi Ting Wang and will now play the unseeded Maria Vento in tomorrow's final. Sugiyama ranked number 24 in the world stamped her authority on the match early, breaking Wang in the fourth game to lead 3-1. Great shot. But in a scrappy first set, there were five breaks of serve, Wang showing it was no fluke making it to the semis. The match was mainly played from the baseline, but on the few occasions Sugiyama ventured to the net, it paid dividends. But in the end, it was Sugiyama's extra experience that made the difference. And there she is, into the final. Hey, Sugiyama, the fourth seed of Japan, into the final of the Women's Hardcore Championships here at Hope Island. Last year, Sugiyama finished runner-up. Tomorrow, she hopes to go one better, claiming the Gold Coast is now her second home. So many friends here and a lot of people supporting me here, so I feel like really comfortable playing here. Up against Sugiyama in tomorrow's final will be Maria Vento. The unseeded Venezuelan was too good for Sylvia Plischke of Austria 6-2-6-3. Tomorrow's final begins at 11am. The Cougars have scored a convincing win over reigning Australian Baseball League champions, the Perth Heat. Batter Paul Gorman was among the stars of the 19-2 victory. 
These days, the Gold Coast hitter is only too happy to be playing baseball after suffering a compound leg fracture three years ago. As I look back now, it's, it was a long, long recovery and I'm just really glad to be sort of back playing baseball, you know, and to be playing well is just a, you know, it's just a bonus. Playing well is an understatement. His consistency again showed last night against Perth. He's among the top five hitters in the ABL and last night scored two doubles. Gorman's personal aim now is to make the Australian team for the year 2000 Olympics. It'd be great, I think, you know, and, and in Australia, in, in Sydney, it'd be just in the year 2000, it'd be great. In last night's thrashing of Perth, the Gold Coast was too good in every department. It was just one of those games where things got rolling and couldn't stop us. The Cougars will play Perth in another nine innings match tonight at Carrara. A third game is set down for tomorrow night. Thoroughbred buyers have opened their wallets during the first session of the Magic Million sale at Bundle. Top price so far today has been $150,000 for a bay filly by Geiger Counter, brought by Sydney trainer Bill Mitchell. A marauding colt fetched $100,000, while a masque filly sold for $90,000. The sale of almost 500 thoroughbreds continues tomorrow night and Sunday. Well, tomorrow's the big one at the Turf Club with the running of the Rich Magic Millions race. Jock Belogli reports. Well, tomorrow's the day. Magic Millions Classic on the Gold Coast, and what a race it's going to be. But I'm tipping the favourite to salute. Her name, Cat Nipped. Look, she's been in brilliant form and has been on the Gold Coast for three or four days, talking to trainer Peter Hayes last night. He couldn't be happy with her progress. Barrier three, Melbourne Cup winning jockey Jim Cassidy aboard. She's an on-pace runner. What more do we want? The Magic Millions, race six, number 16, Cat Nipped. Racing at Rose Hill tomorrow, and a horse that's won his last two starts should make it the hat-trick. His name, Don't Disturb. Last start at Randwick brought off an enormous plunge in winning, and he didn't win, he won easily. Tomorrow, Cameron Swan aboard, trained by the informed John Size. He does look the one. Race four at Rose Hill, number eight, Don't Disturb. Although all the action will be on the Gold Coast tomorrow, they still are racing in Brisbane, the venue Doombin. And a horse that did run a sensational third at the Gold Coast last Saturday lines up by the unfortunate name of Sad. Now, he ran, she did, I mean, she ran third in the Silk Stocking, which is a prestigious race. Tomorrow drops a long way in grade, has got an allowance for young Glenn Courtney, drawn well, I think she'll get the prize. Race six at Doombin, number two, Sad. This grandstand will be packed to the rafters tomorrow, standing room only for Magic Millions Day. Not only the Magic Millions Classic, but seven great supporting events. If you're anywhere in the vicinity of the Gold Coast, pop in because you'll have one sensational day out. Until next week, good luck and good punting. Well, we have seven other great races here at the Gold Coast Turf Club tomorrow. If you're having a bet, I suggest you should be in race three, number five, Fine Fabric, and over to race five, number three, Brigadier Forever. Well, Sailing Identity's the Lee Smith family dominated line honours in today's opening race of the Forex Inshore Regatta. Accelerate, skippered by former Australian champion Noel Lee Smith, led the race from start to finish on board the latest Elliott design. He was followed home by Urgent, skippered by his son Ben, who's just returned from finishing second in the National 420 Championship in Adelaide. With 15 to 18 knots southeasterly, sailing conditions were perfect for the record fleet of 17. The regatta continues tomorrow and on Sunday. And Cathy, that's sport. Have yourself a good weekend. You too, David. And we'll have the all-important weather details after the break and also an update on water activities. An overcast and windy sort of Friday. The showers stayed away from the coast, but Canungra in the hinterland recorded two millimetres. Cooler temperatures along the coast with a top of 26 degrees. It's currently 26. The wind from the east southeast at 17 kilometres an hour. Cloudy periods and a few showers to start the weekend. Moderate to fresh southeast to easterly winds. 21 tonight, a top of 28 tomorrow. On the satellite photo, rain and storms are continuing over the tropics, prompting flood warnings from the Bureau. Patchy rain over the interior. The high in the Tasman still directing southeasterlies along the coast. Checking the weekend weather, it's a mixed bag around the nation, wetting Sydney, Canberra and Melbourne. Fine elsewhere, though Brisbane is expecting showers. And more rain on the way with showers until Tuesday, temps around 29 degrees. Well, weather conditions are still not ideal for fishing, but charter fisherman Paul Burt still has some ideas up his sleeve for the weekend on the water. You can see the cyclones are definitely making their presence known. Fishing this weekend is going to be kept to the protected inshore waterways of the Gold Coast. And here's a look at the coastal waters forecast.
20 to 25 knots southeast is during Saturday with lighter southwest as early morning. Not much change on Sunday with seas 1.5 to 2 metres on a 2 to 3 metre southeasterly swell. There will be an early morning high tide in the seaway at 20 to 7, a low at 1 o'clock and a small evening high at 10 to 7. Those lucky anglers who took advantage of the good weather last weekend were blessed with some good fish offshore and inshore. These pearl perch, regarded as one of the finest eating fish, were taken out on the 50 fathom reefs. Some good sized <laughs> parrotfish, rosy jobfish and mowong were also caught in the same area. Whiting and flathead have been caught in most of the estuaries including Squire Island and the banks behind the Southport Pool. For brim, try the northern banks of Crab Island, the channels into the seaway and off the rock walls at the entrance to the Tweed River. If you're heading offshore, check the local bars first. Check what the tides are doing and what the weather will be doing later that morning. Crum and Tally and Tweed bars claim a lot of boats and it's not always that the novices who come unstuck. Catching mackerel is great fun, but believe me, it's not worth losing your boat, fishing gear or your life. For more info, check out Brownies Case Watch in tomorrow's Kerry and the Sunday Mail. Good fishing and I'll see you next week. Thanks, Paul. Well, the big surf promised by the cyclones up north still hasn't arrived. The waves have dropped in tonight's Healthy Life Surf Report. Unfortunately, the surf took a turn for the worse today. One metre of east south east swell, but the east south east wind was up early. Still, there's nothing stopping Royce and the Paradise Chopper from checking all the coastal action. And right along the northern beaches, there's been lots of rips and sweeps about this week. Avoid those deep water channels. Stay out of those rips and swim only between the red and yellow flags. And onshore and crumbly Burley Point, not terribly inviting unless you're a surf-starved grommet or suffering adolescence aggressive condition. Crum and Alley wasn't much better. Apache east southeast swell of a half to less than one metre. Smooth conditions at Greenmount and Rainbow Bay, although too foolish off the 5.30 a.m. high tide and better off on that midday low tide. D Bar was the spot, particularly the Lover's Rock Peak, up to one metre plus, slightly onshore, but the bodyboarders had taken a serious hold on Lover's spinning doughies in the barrel, hot stuff from the Esky King, and of course drop-ins always happen out at D-Bar, but I don't recommend it. It's spot the hottie time, and this young snapper rock surf rider hails from the Tweed Coast. He lives the life of Riley on the Pro Tour and surfing all the exotic spots, and he is one of the most photogenic members of the Quicksilver team. If you know who I mean, call Prime Television on double five seven three eight triple seven Monday morning after 9am with the correct answer. And you could win a copy of Quicksilver's Enjoy the Ride, Enjoy the Weekend, and we'll do it all the same again next Monday. Thanks, Andy. Now recapping the major news of the day. A call for the federal government to deal with shady tourism operators, a crackdown on pedicabs labelled touts by council, and six more surf rescues as the danger continues off our beaches. And that's Prime Gold Coast News at the end of another working week. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you again on Monday night.